Today we're going to have a look at how to make an analog clock in Unity. This can be kind of useful if you want to accelerate time and demonstrate days or for some reason you may actually want to display an analog clock for example you might want a 60 second timer that goes down like a stopwatch. Now let's go and do this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my camera to a solid color and I'm going to go with white this time. And I'm going to add a canvas. I'm going to change this to camera. I'm going to drop the main camera in and set the distance to one. I'm now going to set my scene up to look from the back. Frame it up. I'm also going to turn this to orthographic view. But to do this, you'll need a few sprites. I'm just going to import them in. If you want to use the same sprites as me, you can do that and download them at a link in the description for free. But once you've imported them, make sure they're sprites. So on my UI, I'm going to add an image. I'm going to drop the clock onto this image and I'm going to resize it to a size that I kind of like. That looks good and that will give us some room underneath to put the buttons. So this is your clock background. Let's duplicate this. And we'll make a minute hand. So use your long hand image. And that should already be lined up perfectly. So that as you rotate this. Let's duplicate that. And let's add an hour hand. All we need to do here is put the shorthand image on instead and we'll use that for pointing at the hours. Now let's duplicate this again and this will be our second hand. Now I'm going to make this smaller, holding down shift to keep it the same size. I just need to line it up so that dots in the center. Maybe we can even go a little bit smaller. And now you'll be able to rotate this. And that's where our seconds are going to be shown. So next up, I'm going to bring in three buttons. I normally do use Text Mesh Pro here, but because it's going to be a fairly simple button that's not really part of the process, I'm just going to use standard buttons. And I'll just duplicate this to make my stop and reset buttons. I'm also going to add a UI slider and we're going to use this slider just to demonstrate speeding up and slowing down time. I'm going to set the minimum value for this to be one, which is normal time, and our maximum may be a thousand so that we can really speed it up. Normally you'd label this, but we can remember that that's going, what that's for. Now that we've done this, let's make a script for our analog clock.
Double click it and open it in Visual Studio. So since we're using images and the slider, we'll need to add the library for Unity user interface. First up, let's make references for the images for the second minute and hour hand. Next, let's add a slider for changing speed. We're now going to need some variables to, for the, to see if the timer is running, see how long it has been running, to work out what the actual speed of the timer is, and also how many days have passed. Because I'm going to put the days into a separate variable. I'm going to make the days variable private, but I will serialize it so that we can see it in the editor. Now we're not going to need a start function, so we can remove that. Let's start by making a display time function first. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is work out if our timer is over 24 hours, in which case we'll increment our days and decrease that amount from our timer. Now if it's greater, that means we need to take this amount off our timer. And we increment our days by one. And that's all the plus plus means, it's the same as plus equals one. Now that we've done that, we can work out our hours, minutes and seconds. Let's start with our hours. What we're doing on this line is we're dividing our timer by seconds times minutes in an hour. And in that way, this will leave us with a number of hours, point something, and the floor to win will get rid of whatever that is. So if it's 3.5 hours, it'll leave you with three hours. We're now gonna repeat this process and do it in a similar way for minutes. So what we're doing here is we're taking our timer, we're dividing it by the seconds to get minutes, and then we're subtracting our hours from that because we've already used those up. And now we're gonna do the same process for the seconds. So in this case, we had to subtract both the minutes and the hours. Next up, because we're a 24, we're not a 24 hour clock. If, the hour, if your hours are greater than 12, you just want to subtract 12 so that it works with an analog clock. And finally, we're going to use the local ruler angles on each of these to display them appropriately. So let's start with the hour hand. You take your number of hours, you divide it by 12 to get a percentage, and then multiply it by 360 degrees. I've gone by minus 360 degrees because we're looking at the UI from behind, and because we're looking at it from behind, things are invert inverted. So let's try and do this again, but we'll do it for the minute hand. In this case, we'll take our minutes, divide it by the number of minutes in an hour, and again multiply it by minus 360 degrees. We can copy this and just change it a little bit to make it work for seconds. And now that should display the time correctly. Let's add our start, stop and reset timer. 
So for our start timer, all we have to do is set is timer equal to true. For our stop timer, we just need to set is timer to false. For our reset timer, we are going to have to reset our variables and we'll also call display time to update the clock in case it isn't actually running. Finally, we'll write a function to change the speed and all we're going to do with this is read the speed off the slider and set it into timer speed. Finally, we need to go back to our update function and we just need to call the timer and increment it by time.delta time and call the display function if is timer equals true. And remember to multiply it by time and speed because if the time and speed is greater than one, we want time to go quicker. So save this and head back to Unity and we'll hook it all up. Let's add our analog clock script to the canvas. We'll drag our slider into the slider slot and our hands into the appropriate place. This is one of the reasons it's good to use names because I immediately know I'm dragging the right thing into the right place. I'm going to grab these three functions. I'm going to add on clicks to them by having them all selected. I've done that to all three at the same time. Likewise, I'm going to drag the canvas in here for all three. And now I'm going to go to the start function and add the appropriate function and then do that for the other two. So we also need to go to our slider and then in here we add our canvas and the function that we're going to call is the change speed. Now let's play and give this a go. When I hit start you can see the second hand moves. Let's just increase the speed of our time and you can see now that the analog clock works. I quite like how it jumps from one minute to the next. That's how I remember clocks being at school. However, if you wanted it to be a very smooth transition, I'll just show you how to do that. So go back to your script. So that's your jumping minute and hour hand. I'm going to comment those two lines out and leave them. And instead I'm going to add smooth minute and hour hands. This will leave you with the choice of how you want to do it. Let's start with the hour hand. I'm just going to copy the hour hand we've already written as a starting point and have a look at what we need to change to make it smooth. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to take our hours, which is great, but we're also going to have to add something to it. We're going to have to add to it the percentage that the minutes have gone through. So let's go and we'll add minutes divided by 60 because that's the number of minutes in an hour and then we'll divide by the number of hours. And then this should give us a much a nice smooth transition of the hour hand going around. Let's try and do the same for the minutes. Now here we do the same kind of thing, except we're going to add the seconds. So let's add seconds. I'm going to divide, divide it by 3600 because that's the number of seconds there are in an hour. But this should also mean that 
but this will now also make her minute hand smooth. Let's go back to Unity and give this a test. I'm just going to speed my clock up a bit. Now you can see the minute hand and the hour hand are moving around in a smoother manner. So you could use this clock in many ways. You could use it like a stopwatch timer. You could use it for clocks in your game, or you can use it for like sped up world clocks. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please subscribe, like, or comment. Doing that really helps let me know that you like the video and you want to see me continue making them. Remember to keep having fun with your game development.